Despite years of effort and millions of dollars fighting it, homelessness continues to be a problem that plagues Kern County. And while there are many factors that contribute to those problems, Tim Johns explains what some of the main drivers of the issue are here in our own community. While the issue is extremely complex, experts agree that one of the most prominent causes of homelessness is housing, or more specifically, the lack thereof. I never thought that would ever happen to me. You never, you never think that, that kind of thing can happen to you. Like thousands of others throughout Kern County, Gordon Meyer knows the struggles of homelessness all too well. He lives in a low-income apartment now, but back in 2014, the local veteran lost his home due to financial difficulties. Unable to find an alternative, he ended up on the streets for several weeks. You don't know what to do because it's always, you've always had something, you know, like a house or somewhere to go, and then all of a sudden you got nowhere to go. And Meyer isn't alone. Heather Kimmel works for the Housing Authority of the County of Kern. She says the lack of affordable housing, which is generally open to those making less than around $33,500 a year, is one of the primary drivers of homelessness in our community. If a homeless individual is just going out onto the private market to try and secure housing on their own, it's going to be nearly impossible for them. According to Kimmel, nearly 98% of all rental properties, both public and private in Kern County, are currently occupied. Given such a tight market, even if they find a unit they can afford, most homeless people simply get overlooked. Everybody views Kern County as being a, an affordable place to live, which is true, but that doesn't mean that our vacancy rate is, is greater than any other part of the state. So when you think of um, California being an affordable place to live, there has to be units to live in. In addition to competing for only 2% of the rental supply, Kimmel says that most homeless folks also face challenges that others don't. On top of going up against people with more income and better credit ratings, stigmas and stereotypes often prove difficult to break. A lot of misconceptions about the homeless population is that all of them, if you move them into housing, they're just going to destroy the unit or they're going to disrupt the neighbors. Um, and what we found is that it's not, it's not actually true. So why do we have so little affordable housing? The problem has been ongoing for decades and can be attributed to many different factors, including high cost and stringent regulations. But Kimmel says it got really bad after 2012 when Sacramento essentially got rid of rural development agencies, organizations that helped to build low-income housing in places like Kern County. It became much more difficult for developers to build affordable housing in California. And the effect was almost immediate, with the number of new units being built plummeting from 314 in 2007 to just 15 in 2017. With the lack of new housing worsening the already intense problem, the strain on existing resources exploded. We have 14,000 people on a waiting list for our low-income public housing units, and we only have 865 units. To put that number into context, that's about 16 people waiting for every unit. Given so few options, many people end up on the streets for weeks or even years at a time. That's why Gordon Meyer considers himself one of the lucky ones. And until we can adequately fix the problem, Meyer says he just hopes that we can all show each other a little compassion. That's what you do in the military, too. You take care of your own, you know, and it should be the same way for everybody. And I will have more on the issue of homelessness in our county on Wednesday in part two of our series when we look at how mental illness plays a role. But for now, reporting in studio, Tim Johns, Eyewitness News.